Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. For coffee. Yeah. 6 a.m. We'll and do it. Coffee with Phil. Or just saying you could do it when people are getting home from their nighttime activities, like late, late, late night with Phil. Yeah. 3.30 action. That's yeah. when you're getting up, right? No, I get up at 6. Okay. On the dot. What time, 5 what time 30, you go to, what 5 time you go to bed? Uh, 11.30 maybe sometimes. Okay. No, I mean, no, nah, it, it's the window is really like 10 till... What time do the boys go to bed? Um... Bennett goes to bed at 8, and then Miles is terrible right now because he's still napping. So it's like 9 or 10. And then the days that we keep him up all day and fight it, he goes to sleep at the same time. That's nice. So, but the daycare sets us up, though. They're like, we gave him quiet time, and then they all fall asleep. Like, that's what happens during quiet time. So, like, he's at the age right now where we're... Well, how old is Miles now? Four. Yeah. So nap time's done. He, no more nap. He don't need no more naps because then he stays up. So that's it. Do you hear the people in the background see? It picks up everything. Like the hallway, right? That's pretty legit, though. Yeah, so that means, like, usually what I need to really do is close, I mean, when you close the door, and then a real, real studio, like, you see how this is all this the space? Foam. You get the foam. I get the foam. You I have the foam at, you, I'm saying, you had the foam at home, though, don't you? Yeah, but I haven't set it up yet. I'm going to do it in my bar, the little carriage house. Carriage house? Well, that, you know. At the House of Alpha. Yeah, the, the house, house of Alpha. Al- yeah, I'm rather use that because that sounds mad slavery, like carriage house like no it's the house of alpha so that's my house that's what i'm saying yes yeah, so i'm gonna put that out there have that and then have the setup it's more like the young bucks house it looks like when you they're watching bluey and oh yeah, they took over my house they took over i think i already had projections where i go out there think i'm gonna do my thing and i'm like they're having like a, a kickback what the young people call kickbacks little mini parties in my own house and i'm like how did you get here and they didn't they told their friends and they just snuck in through the woods wait so you they can actually pull up their car and probably sneak friends, and I would never know. That's how big it is. They can just tell them to park down the street and come around the back or something, Damn. and then go straight to that house. Do you have people behind you, though? No. Well, yeah, four acres behind me. Like, so it's like a legit walk through the woods to get to your house, then? No, no, no. The front is not the woods. No, I'm saying, like, people sneaking through the back, they like... Oh, yeah, they can do that through the woods. Like, they could either come through the woods, or they could park down, like, the main street. And then, like, we have, you know, some house area to the side that's not near the house and they could just walk down the side I see what you're like saying. really close to the line and then just kind of like n- I would never know they so were So you'll have like kids in your backyard but like uh, when did you get here? Exactly. I could do that. Did I've it- had that before like when the kids came neighborhood kids came and they were like jumping on my trampoline and I never knew they came and then they left I didn't know they left. Damn. So. Yeah, like- <laughs> yeah, like, so that is it. Craziness. I guess we're waiting for as we wait for uh, Junior. I mean, what are we talking about, man? Let's just make know, up man. some this stuff. Is, this is, I mean, like you're in Atlantic City. Is this your first time in Atlantic City? Yeah. So, what do you think, man? Like, this is this is it. Can I be honest? Yeah. I feel it, it was kind of uh, destitute. You know what I'm saying? Like when I went to the boardwalk, I see all these closed down businesses, man. And like you said, short staff and stuff. So I wonder if the uh, tourism industry was hit. Because of COVID, is it going to bounce back? That's so what I saw. I think it's back. It's just that they can't find people to pay to work. Yeah. Because that race for talent is out of control around here. So, like, you work at Amazon for 20 plus an hour. Why am I going to be busting tables for 10 or minimum wage? Now, when you say Amazon, do they have one of those distributing plants so around here? By, not so much here, but, like, closer to Rowan. There's three. There's See? a Walmart. There's a there's distribution a, plant. Yeah, Walmart, oh, it's Target, it's Amazon, and now Amazon. We have students, so we're an Amazon Choice School now. So now they're paying for our students to go to school while they work there part time, pretty much. That's a wrap. That's it. So That's we have nine students do it, and they give them like five thousand. It's out of control, and you're so like, so there it is. So you get twenty three. You get twenty three an hour, and you get five k towards school, and they don't even want you to stay afterwards. Like you can, like, and they'll hook you up, but. They're like, oh, no. Well, see, that's it. Because, like I said, I told you, I went to the uh, Rainforest Cafe yesterday, and I knew that because it was like a, you know, it's kiddish. It has a theme, and I legit went in there, and they're like, they're making people do reservations, you know, to to have the tables, 
and I looked inside the actual, like while I was in line, you know me, I didn't, I always wait till the last minute, I didn't make no reservation. I legit saw, like there's a table right there, there's a table right there, but they were like, we can't, because I got one host, and then like the, the one per I saw the one person moving, working their butt off, going to all the tables, and so they were short staffed. Yeah, no, that, you know what, this time of year is slow because school in Jersey gets out this week. Uh, okay. So we're not. So like, you think it'll be faster? You think it'll be better? Oh, it'll. I mean, the problem too is they used to bring in a lot of uh, foreign nationals to come work, and then there's visa issues now trying to get people. So oh yeah, we had that in Virginia with a life. A lot of lifeguards were from like Lithuania or something. Yeah, so we had a lot of Eastern Europeans come in and work, and getting a visa right now is rough. Um, also, if you go just south of Atlantic City, there's Ocean City, which is like the family boardwalk. Like there's, it's a dry town. It's all rides. Like, when you think of Boardwalk, that's what you think of Boardwalk. Atlantic City is much more, I'll just say gritty. Like, it's got more yeah. of a, a, yeah. gritty, a gritty feel to it. Man, I remember I used to watch HBO when I wasn't supposed to. And I used to watch, uh, what's that? Is it called, was it called Hookers and Johns? Was it actually the name of the show? Oh, the one that wasn't, yeah, no. Oh. I, no, what was it called? Like, After Dark or something? After, so, there's something bad. Yeah. But it was Atlantic City. That was the episode. And I used to watch that. And I was like, first of all, why am I watching HBO at night at like 12, not supposed to be watching this, and then I'm learning about hookers in different places. But Atlantic City had a dark underbelly, and that stuck in my mind like when you watch shows that you have no, like I have no family life experience. I didn't know there was, you know, like learning now that there's like a neighborhood and people grew up here. I thought Atlantic City was just like that gritty part. Like yeah, you no, did. it's, you know, it, it, it's one of those areas that I know they're doing more for the community. So like even putting in, like down here is a food desert. Like you, it's hard to find, like shopping, like supermarkets. But you have to remember, like down here, like where I live, just south of here, but like most of it's transient on the island. So which means, like, so I don't live on, like they call it onshore, offshore. Okay. So like I live offshore, right? And that's just I live like two minutes from the ocean, like okay. two miles from the ocean. But it, it's it's more of a suburban community. That's what. Yeah. Okay. And then you have places that on the island, which is you know. There some are suburban, some are like beach communities that have people yeah. and schools. Others are not, but a lot of things flow in. Like tourism is definitely number one in our area. Like so, to here tourism to here. Atlantic City, just south of here, just north of here. Like the beaches okay. are legit. The there's yeah. great food, just great yeah. opportunity, and then there's nightlife. But if you don't, if it's it does have a, a city element, but trying for the the community of just just general area. It's one of those things, making sure the opportunities are here, whether it's li like work, whether it's food, whether it's education. So the I would say not only Atlantic City, but the area is trying very, very hard to make sure that this is a year-round destination, not just a summer mm -hmm. destination, but also there's great opportunity here. Like we have land, we have like wind energy is coming to, yeah. to Northeast, it's coming here. Like you'll see this as a big wind hub hopping in the next five years. Like Orsted is here, all the big players are here. It just it, it changes the dynamic where the casino industry was it in the like the. the That's about to ask when it was when was it popping? Pop I think in seventy nine it started. So like the eighties and nineties, like with Trump and. I was about to say when did Trump come in here and like in the eighties and nineties it was a lot different and then there have been downturns but now like online gaming I think New Jersey was number one for a long time I think they're number two now for online gaming. Okay. So betting things on those but that that brings in more technology we have some different areas too so I mean. I think Atlantic City is on definitely on the come up. There's going to be a so next time we come here, I think in a few years, you'll see there's a big water park on the boardwalk, um, different mm -hmm. restaurants. So I mean, it's something that we're going to see kind of grow. Well, we have a special guest joining us right now. Uh, just, there's some headphones right there, and um, you know we're just chopping it up. We're not really making any sense. We're talking about Atlantic City. We're talking about uh, my first impressions of it. Um, please welcome, and I think he's on mic number four. Please welcome, do you hear yourself? Yeah. All right, please welcome um, El Presidente of uh, Eastern Ace. <laughs> welcome to the show. I just made it there. Yes, yes, welcome. There you go, welcome. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. I don't know it. why I just did gunshots. I just want to do that randomly. No, no, that was awesome. So we were just talking as we came on. Uh, I think, first of all, I didn't even do like an uh, introduction. I just started talking. That's good. So my name is Philip Wilkerson, uh, host of Positive Filter. I'm joined by my online friend, now on, in real life friend, Bob Billert, uh, which is like, I felt like, honestly, I felt like I had butterflies going up the escalator, like um, 
Dirty Dancing. I thought you was going to hold me up because everyone said you were so I, tall. I, I was waiting. I was like, damn. You man. thought I was going to be short. I thought I was going to be tall. I thought it was going to be like a, <laughs> yeah, I, know, I thought I was going to hug your belly and all that. Yeah, no. And then my wife this morning was here and I get a picture of my wife and Phil all cheesing and I'm like, what's this? I've been waiting three years for this. My yeah. wife just dips in. She got first. First I'm dips. Like, damn. <laughs> I love the ladies. Um, LL. LL Cool P, you know what I'm saying? No, I'll change it, you know what I'm saying? Copyright. <laughs> there you go. So I'm joined by Bob Biller, um, and he's here. And then now we're joined, just recently, uh, joining into the podcast, we're joined by Junior. So I don't know, I mean, this is day two of a conference. I probably should be going to more sessions. I am. This is a session. I'm going to just say that. And we were talking about our first impressions of Atlanta City. I told him that uh, my only first impression was watching uh, Hookers and Johns or whatever that show, or the show was on HBO and I had this real gritty view of, of, of Atlantic City, and he's talking about the family and family-friendly part. No, yeah, no. And then even this area, like, there's Ducktown, which is um, the restaurants there, the architecture there is legit. And then if you just go south of here, it's, you know, beach community. Like, I'm talking, like, two minutes south of here. It's, um, like, people live here all year round. It's, you know, nice houses. And then if you go a little bit further south, it's big money. There it is. Like four or five, six and This million. place has evolved as well because Big when time. you think about one of our first Eastern Ace conferences there it when is. we came here uh, many, many, many years ago um, to a hotel that now is, a, is another hotel because they, they got bought out because that <laughs> one went out of business. Uh, the changes that you see, the, the infrastructure that you see, the highways, I mean, everything is nice and clear, easy to get in, easy to get out. Um, they, it, You can tell that they have spent some time. I, I think that what wasn't here the last time may have been the outlets and so you have the new outlets and and that is great for folks that just want to go shopping as well um, but along the waterfront and the boardwalk you've seen a lot of the changes that are taking place as well so i think it's only going to get better as a city uh, especially uh, as we start getting back after covid with tourism and and beachside destinations atlantic city and some of these types of communities um, start to welcome people back well, you know, I'm just going to get right into like what I talked about yesterday. What has been both y'all's experience um, this opening up? Like for me, and I was talking, uh, I had Noah and Tibby and um, Walter on the show. and We were talking about in real life and just that vibe. What is y'all, like, first of all, go around. Are y'all extroverted or introverted? Extroverted. Yeah, I'm extroverted. I, You know what? I like my free time. Like I don't, like people are like, oh, I can't go to like dinner by my. Like I love going to dinner by myself, but I really enjoy things like this because you just get to feed off other people's energy. You get to learn. It's a space like this. The the best part. I was telling a colleague who is new to our office. He's like, "What's Eastern Ace like?" And he's been with other. I was like, "You can ask people real questions and get real answers." And there's no. It's not fake. It's not pretentious. And even though we may all quote unquote compete in a in an ecosystem. Like, you get real talk, like, hey, does this work on your campus? There's people here I've legitimately called with real concerns in our office, our campus, and said, hey, heard you did this. How did you do it? And they gave me the full playbook. It wasn't mm-hmm. like, well, I can't yeah. tell you that. That's kind of our se-. Like, no, this is what you need to do. Did you talk to this person? And vice versa. Other people have called me like, hey, we're looking to do this. Your university's done it. How did you do it? And it was wide open. Even so much so, it was with the provost joined someone from our you know our realm and careers and they're like wow you were just really open with us i'm like yeah this isn't this isn't a, a fake industry like we're all competing but at the end of the day we're all successful because we're all successful as opposed to there's only one of us or two of us or three of us oh yeah i, I thought about that too on a bigger to lower scale like uh in virginia i'm like i just be giving people all the like you said the playbook i just copy and paste it do this and then vice versa like they're like oh you got student workers how do you build out that program and I set up informational interviews with people on my staff, and we just tell them everything. And the fact is, because you're right, like, it don't phase me. I mean, like, you know, maybe, you know, you're saying competing. Well, I ain't get paid based on student numbers, you know what I'm saying? Like, so if they get better enrollment, whatever, it don't phase me. So, I, like I said, like, for me, it just builds better relationships. So that's, like, that's my win, so I don't really care. And I would say that the nature of the space that we work in as well, mm-hmm. it, it's all built on, hopefully built on successes for our students, mm-hmm. because that, that's what's key to what we do, whether you are on the college side or you are on the employer side, we're all in this for the benefit of our students, whether it's your students, Bob's students, my students, we want to see our students be successful, we want to see our students achieve their dreams in life, we want to see them move into careers that they never thought possible. 
And the one thing that I think I'm hearing from everything that Bob said, and, and whether we use it as a formalized term or not, but mentorship, yeah. that's what this organization tends to be for many. It's being able, and like I said, my, my first tap on the shoulder was Dr. Walter Tarver. Yeah, is it? And said like, hey, we'd like you to get involved in this. We think you would be good. Would you like to join a committee? We want to see you join a committee. And then as you move on in time, then you start to talk to other people. Hey, Phil, like, do you think this would be something, Bobby, do you think this would be something that you want to do? And so I think that that's what people has drawn them to this organization. And just like you said, the open transparency of sharing whatever, there's no secrets in, in, in this industry. No, there's no there's, secret sauce, man. There's, there's no secret sauce. It's, it's about success for our students. And if you can help, and if, if I can t reach out to Bob, and Bob can say, like, hey, Junior, here's how we're doing it. This mm -hmm. is what's made us successful. Yeah. That might not be something that works fully on my campus, but if there's elements and pieces of what that's he's it. doing that I can take and yeah. apply that to my university, 100% yeah. I'm gonna do that. And Definitely. I think that's the thing, people are open to sharing how to work for your students, because that's what we do is working for our students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering what other industries are similar to that. I don't think that is. Like, you don't see banks saying, hey, this is how we get money and you get money. Oh, of course not, no. <laughs> <laughs> here's money, here's how you get money. Here's no, I mean, like, about yeah. what Junior did with yeah. Westfield State is that he, Create a campaign that I think every university yeah, in the country one. copied, and it was something that it was you could make it your own. But the fact that you see your colleagues pivoting in such a positive way during the pandemic to support students, and you're like, well, why can't we do this? And I remember talking to the Junior, like, hey, what brought that out? Like, hey, we just wanted to make sure that they knew that our students were ready to work, I love and we knew that. that. And I you're exactly like, okay, what you're talking about and and the synergies that came from that. But it's something, some, and I, it, I don't mean to make it overly simple, but it's a, such a fantastic idea. Simple. But I don't think that you didn't see any university copy that idea right from the jump. And it wasn't like, well, we did that first, and you did this first. It was more, this helps all of us, and that's where. That idea of mentorship, there's, I mean, I've been very blessed to work with Dr. Walter Tarver. I, I say this openly, I wouldn't be in the field if it wasn't for for Walter. So it's one of those things where you can look on people and you can see what the amazing things they're doing and it's such different scales and how the impact is. Like, the cool thing is I've seen people where I make an ask on LinkedIn for one of our students and everyone on our field copies it or like likes it or makes a comment or sends it to someone else or, hey, I have someone here you need to talk to about that. Like I yeah. said, I don't. There's the place where you feel like, hey, we all have each other's back, which is very rare. Which is, I mean, I crashed a conference because of it. I would definitely not. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's people in our field that you don't want to see sometimes. This is a place I would have probably driven very far to make sure that I can at least see you, obviously in person. But yeah, you know, people like Junior. I know Jake's here. I know other people that looked after me when I first started. I, I mean, I can't pay that back. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm, I don't know if that's like a. Uh, you must have like a secret thing because like everyone does. It's like. I told you my people is Jill and Jill and Jen separately. They both reached out to me and I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> like they're like, "Yo, I'd like to have a conversation with you. Do you have a moment?" And then I set up a Zoom. And I was like, "Man, what's this? they're about to chew me out." And it was the same thing. Legit, Jill legit was like, "I think you should be involved with the co-chairing thing." And I think you need it. You, you could co-chair. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. I never co-chaired anything before. And she's like, you do it with Bob. I was like, is he? And literally the first line was, is he cool? And she's like, yeah, I think you like him. And then we met. And I was like, oh, I can do this. But it was more like these random people. So I, I think now, like I, I literally told Junior last night, I was like, now that I see this and I'm, I guess I'm transitioning into leadership. I keep on pointing because I, I really don't know how I got here doing technology. We went on my Instagram last night and it was pretty bad. Like why y'all let me do this on Instagram. But the uh, point is, now that I have a responsibility, I gotta look for someone either in my office or you know, someone that's a young professional or newcomer. And like, I have like this, like, like I had to pur purposely, so I was setting up people in my office saying like, you need to get involved with a committee. And I was like, and so um, Natalie last night was like, I need help with a committee. And I just pointed, I was like, she can do it. And I was trying to put on one of my coworkers because I felt like people were doing it. And I think that's the culture we built here. It makes a lot of sense. And, and I would say that that's the thing, that being, you have to be open to, to help others and welcome others, and, and that's important, being able to welcome newcomers, because when they come here, it can be intimidating when they come yeah. to a conference. Some of them may not know anybody. Like, we had somebody um, who, Robin Beauchamp, and somebody from our office was here, and she arrived late uh, yesterday in the afternoon, and it was a matter of, hey, 
do you know any of these folks that are in the Boston region with you? No, I don't. And just walking the person over and saying like, hey, here you go, here's this person. They're from Boston, they're from Boston, they're from Boston. Mm. And then you just let it happen because that makes the person feel welcome because then they're like, oh, these are some of my people. They're right down the street. And then Steve Savitsky, who's gonna be new to the board, was like, oh my God, I'm right down the street from you. Let's get some coffee, let's get some lunch, we can talk. And it's mm -hmm. a good way to make mm -hmm. people feel welcome within the organization, which is so important, especially for the newcomers, because we, as people who have been around for a while in the organization, we have to continue to build the pipeline of leadership mm -hmm. and talent so that when we're not here, the next generation of leaders is, is taking this organization to even greater heights. That's crazy. You feel like now, you feel like you're the uh, OGs now? You oh, feel we, it? De we definitely are the OG. We're, we're more tired. <laughs> did you see it? I know. Did we, you see, need, we need more sleep. Did you see that last night? I was telling my wife that I was like, uh, you know, like now, like I guess the J. Cole middle child, like I'm not OG yet. But I'm not a newcomer. Like I'm in the middle now. No. But I could definitely see like the people like, like the uh, like last night when made all these past presidents. I was like, oh, well, that's the that's the OGs right there. No. And I'm in the middle. And but then I'm not as quite new as as I said. People are trying to put on. So it's kind of weird. It's a weird vibe. And that's and that's the thing that I think that every every person who is in the organization who's been here a long time, and, and Bob can attest to this, you've got to put on the next generation. You you've got to bring people into the fold because you need people to 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 work on those committees you need co-chairs and you need people with new with new energy one but you also need people with new ideas because our industry has changed threefold mm -hmm. and we're not doing the same things we were doing three years ago we're not doing the same things we were doing five years ago and so you've got to reach out to people that have new ideas and, and new energy and are going to say like hey why have we not tried this and you and bob you and i have had this conversation before like we're all about let's try something new and if it doesn't work then we've learned from it um but yeah. if we if we try it and it's successful then let's roll with it yeah that, bob already knows no, it, <laughs> i it, was it, like man let's try this and he was like all right let's do a show <laughs> no, I, I, I think sometimes we fall back onto tradition yeah and frankly i mean the pandemic for a lot of us yeah. from a career aspect was a restart where okay what are we doing and how are we doing it and yeah. and you don't get many pivotal points like that and that's where this organization you see people doing innovative things that are like wow that's innovative how do we do that and then also the focus on the employers I mean I think there's mm -hmm. always going to be an ebb and flow between being student focused and being industry focused yeah. but it's great to see so many exhibitors here. It's great to see so many, you know, industry partners here. And it's something that it's not just a student affairs conference, which is important. So I don't mean yeah. to minimize. And it's not just an industry focus, which again, important. There's spaces for that. Yeah. But there's very few places that actually bring this together in a spot where you can get things done. And the size has always been perfect. I mean, you're, yeah. bringing, yeah. you're bringing in people where you can get real work done in 48 hours, have fun, make connections, and learn from absolute leaders in your space. I know people from our office are presenting, and I, I mean, I think about you know Dr. Monroe or Kiara or anyone, like, you have people that are national leaders. Um, I mean, you're talking about Robin and you know Jen and you know Jill and all the people, I mean, or even getting Dan Black here at your conference I mean like I told someone else from EY that he was presenting like wow how did you get Dan Black to come do your and it's like well this is this is the, the level of gravity the people our members have and that's that goes back to the past presence you know what's going on now obviously with Jill and Junior and Jen and but also where the future's going so that's where it's just so exciting because you know you have a spot that's not going to rest on its laurels and that's mm -hmm. what makes it just exciting for me for sure do you think that um, this organization is going to, um, I don't know, you heard you know, heard all these concerns about the great resignation, and like you said, this is a college and employer thing. Do you think that this, because we have this mixed space, this, this organization is going to survive a little bit more than like a student-only focused one? And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people are leaving higher ed, but you can leave higher ed and say, I'm still an employer, and then be involved. Do you think that's a difference? Because I've seen people stay, keep their active membership, switching to both sides of that. You know, they, you know, they will work at EY, but like I'm an employer now. I have an employer membership rather than a college membership. Do you think that's what sustains kind of this organization? And, and I think with the organization, what I would say is that we're people focused and people centric. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing that we that we're going to be focused on always, and not not only just that, but. We're also always recruiting. You have to recruit. I mean, it is the lifeblood of this organization, and that's why tapping into people to keep them engaged. And I'm not saying that that might be the thing that keeps them from leaving higher ed, 
but it could be for some the difference is like, oh, now I'm more, I have found a place. I have found my people. I found work that's really energizing. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's, there's that factor as well that we have to demonstrate that. And like any field, there's going to be ebbs and flows. People are going to leave and new people are going to come in. And it's ensuring that the new people that are coming in are actively engaged. So you've been around for a while. And when Thank was, you for being so yeah, polite. Thank nice. you for being so yeah. polite. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like doing that. Shots fired. I don't know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> been around for a while. <laughs> been around for a while. But um, when was like the the you know when you know obviously this is a pandemic and membership might be a little bit low. When was a, like the time where it was like this was way more people? And then uh, my <laughs> second question, being around like I know that maybe the economy has affected it. Uh, I think we were in a recession in two thousand eight. When I, someone told me that, like, oh, when you graduated college, you was in a recession. And I was like, oh, that's why it was hard for me to get a job. I didn't know. I just, like, thought I was sucked at getting a job. Point is, how did that affect um, this organ? Was that kind of an effect, the recession in eight? So, like, so you've seen that tidal wave. Have you seen it? Like, oh, this is going to come back. Don't worry. Let's just ride this storm out kind of thing. It does. And, and every year has been different for this organization. Mm-hmm. And some years it's been higher. And so we look at some of our conference attendances, and certainly we had to adjust for two years been having virtual conferences and mm. one of the virtual conference had almost 700 people attend because they yeah. could do it from home yeah which was really nice uh, but some of those prior years before covid it's, it's been up and you know you we will go between like 350 people i think there was one conference where we had like 465 people which was probably super super large for us yeah um, but in between has covid certainly affected yes absolutely i mean i think people have have been reevaluating their lives reevaluating their work lives yeah uh, they're trying to find a balance, and that's when you talked about people leaving the field. You have some offices where their budgets have been really um, yeah. uh, impacted and affected because of COVID. You've got college enrollments that are impacting universities and colleges. You also have, speaking of employers, you also have some of those budgets impacted because they're also doing less travel. Yep. Um, so, yes, you're, you're going to see that there is ebbs and flows consistently, but I think we'll... we'll the one thing that will continue to make us relevant as long as we engage with our members and provide content that is valuable. Because without that, if we're gonna continue, if we continue to do the same things and like anything in any organization, you will lose members, you will lose, people become disinterested. Mm. And so that's why I think it's important to hear from your newcomers, the newer voices to say, what is it that you value? What is it that you want to see the organization doing? What is the focus? And I think when you really look at the last three years, maybe four, but I would say more the last two to three years, our focus on DEI yeah. and bringing on a board member that actually is focused on that work and looking at everything that we do and trying to embed that throughout the entire organization is a focus. We want people to feel included, so inclusivity is super, super important in this organization, and that's one of my benchmarks for next year, making every single person feel included through like programming, people through the way that we welcome people, saying yeah. hello to people. Yeah. Um, just being open and welcoming uh, is a community, especially from our leadership. Yeah, um, Having people, like Bob said, having people ask you real questions, talk to you and say like, hey, what is this like in your office? What We saw this, how did you get to become a director? What can you advise me on? So it is mentorship again, although mentorship somewhat informal. Yeah, what about you? You've seen this for a while too. No, I. I the ebbs and flows kind no, of No, I mean I think that you want people to to take on new responsibilities if their current level of work is not meeting their needs and I mean that in the broadest sense. And that that's a we see the great resignation as a bad thing, but I would say that it could be a very positive thing because a higher ed to be very real has some stopping points for some positions and yep. we have created people that, you know, will move on to do amazing things. We've had I've had colleagues go on to different jobs and you're like hey, that's a nice next natural progression for you in your career. Yeah. And that's what we espouse. It's what we preach. The fact that we're like, no, don't chase your dreams. Don't go on something that you, where your values have changed. That's something that we need to lean into. Yeah. But as Junior said on the flip side of it, that means there's going to be more people that will be new to higher ed, new to our mm-hmm. environment. And it's so incumbent on us that we are inclusive. And inclusivity means a lot of things to a lot of people. And Eastern Ace has always gone out of its way. And this is something that even when people have had questions, they come back with answers. It's very easy to go, oh, well, we tried and it didn't work. I mean, that the, the, the thing that I've always just been enamored about the people in Eastern Ace and the organization is that it's solution-driven, not problem-focused. It's like, 
hey, we have a problem. And everyone's like, okay, we have a problem. And you know, sometimes it's yeah. very easy to, to dissect the problem. Here, there's solutions. And the yeah. thing that's, again, warming is that not every solution works, but that's okay. And we've learned something and we're going to move forward. And I think you see the, the organization grow because I think people see that general level of care. And then on the flip side of it, we can provide more opportunities for people that whether it's outside of higher ed, inside of higher ed, into the organization, if that allows that person to grow, that's the end goal. It's not, I mean, there's no doubt that, you know, all of us in our first job in higher ed, like, this is going to be it. I mean, we, we, we stop and don't think about that. But for some of us, this may be our last role, and we're okay with that. And that's great. But for others, like, no, I want to do this or more. Or be- it doesn't make a difference. As an organization, the, the, like I said, leaning into that, and saying, yes, the, this is a real thing, but knowing that the organization provides opportunity for general growth, but then also understanding that we're going to have new people that are going to be thrust into situations, and that's where I know I've never felt alone in doing anything in Eastern Ace. Mm-hmm. Now, I've had people, we've had, I've had disagreements with people's thought processes, mm-hmm. but never their passion, never their commitment. And that's something when you can have real conversations where you're like, I totally disagree with that that person's point of view, but know that person's doing everything they can to, to better themselves, their university, their organization, and the, the, the group and what we're a part of, then you're okay with that because those conversations lead to growth. And that's where I know sometimes that's uncomfortable, but I've never not once left a meeting here and going, wow, we've definitely got something done. Even though I might have a different point of view than Junior or yeah. Jill or anyone, and, but again, at the end of the day, that's okay. Those are good things when everyone's coming from the right place. Yeah, it's true. I think that man. I was thinking about. Th- it's funny because like literally, I'm having the same conversation over like Walter was saying the same thing, and so that means to me like if there's consistently and you didn't talk to him about the conversations, that means it's embedded in the culture. Same thing he said. The same thing yesterday. I don't hoard. No, I think it was Noah. Noah's like, I don't hoard my people. If they leave my office or if they're here five years in my office and I knew they could do better, I felt like I failed them as a leader because I wanted them. I wanted to grow them and they need to leave me, you know? Mm-hmm. And he was saying that right next to Tibby, who he's like, she's supposed to leave me, you know what I'm saying? So that was crazy. And then the uncomfortable conversations, Walt said that. So we're saying the same things. I'm thinking, okay, that is not just individually, like it's almost like, uh, Cultural. Cultural, right? When cultural. when someone could say like totally different conversations but reiterate the same key points of inclusivity or try and prototype and fail forward kind of stuff, I'm like, okay, that means it's cultural then. It's not just one off individuals. It's like it comes part of the I guess the mantra or the culture, like you're just spitting off. And it goes back to what we were talking about. If we, we want the best for our students, right? Mm-hmm. But we also want the best for our colleagues. Yeah. And so if, if my place, if you've outgrown our place and you need to move, excuse me, you need to move on and grow, then by all means, I'd be the first to support you and say, go. I mean, we, we had a, a, an individual in our office, and, I, and I'll share this. This was about two and a half, three years ago, just before the pandemic. Young Latinx brother, hyped, full of energy, um, charming, super dedicated, hard worker. And he got this opportunity, he struggled to come to me, and I said, you know that I have an open door policy, come to me and whatnot. And when he he comes to me, he's like, look it. He goes, here's my situation, and I go, let's talk about this right now. I said, wait a second, they're giving you what? $5,000 more a year. You're working two months less a year. What is your commute time being cut down? From 35 minutes to like 13 minutes. I said, if you don't leave, I'll kick you in the butt to get out. There it is. you, you, have to, you have to let your people grow and go in places that they want. Well, Bob, you got to head out. But before you go, hit us with some gems and then you go. No, I, and it's, it's, it's all about our growth. And that's where it's – I think sometimes people, when you are in a leadership role, that think that, oh, well, people leaving and growing is, is a, a mark on you. And it's quite the opposite. Like the success of our team – and I say our. I'm a, a we, our guy – like if someone on our team is successful, we're all successful because and we know what that person had to do and hopefully we can support them. And, but the same thing, if things don't go well, that's an us thing, mm-hmm. right? But a more importantly, then that's an I thing as a leader. Any and parting it, words before you go though? Because you got to, I know you got to bounce. No, I ain't well, trying to hold you up. No, but get you I, in trouble. I don't know if no, it's a wife text no, or no, something. No, yeah, you got to go. But um, probably a kid's text. Like we tied up mommy, come home quick. Yeah. But no, at the end of the day, just. The fact that I can come connect with you, Junior, others, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't miss this for the world. This is something that, 
you know, budgetary constraints or timing or meetings may not allow me to, you know, be here today in a formal standpoint, but I would show up here in my pajamas if it meant, you know, being a part of this in any type of way. So can't thank you enough for all you're doing. Junior, always a pleasure, man. This is this is something that I, I've been looking forward to for three years and we you're, did it. You're, you're much taller than I thought. Yeah, and you're much <laughs> taller, yeah. Thank you. Well, Junior, we're gonna stay off a little bit more yeah. and then uh, whatever we're doing, it's awkward, holler. Yeah, turn it off. There it goes. There it is. Yeah, no. So we lost one guest. And we, hold on. Was he mic three? I think he was. No, you're mic three. Let me turn him off. And then I think you're whatever. Say hello. Hello. Okay, yeah, good. So there it is. Well, we lost one guest. We got another guest. Maybe we just talk about a couple more minutes. And then you can, I know you got to do some presidential things. Um, I, wanna, I do want to touch upon this before you leave, though. The one thing that really struck me, you know I took notes last night, uh, yesterday. Um, First of all, I already look to you as a leader. You know, I text you, you know, and I, I view informal mentorship, whatever. But the thing that you really struck me, and I think we hit a chord on, was the embedding of kindness and leadership. I literally wrote that down. I think I'm going to just dive into that. You know that's been a topic a lot of, I have even podcast episodes like kindness and leadership. But like, when you were drafting your pillars, and I, did you write that speech last night? Did you think about it? Or you just, that was off the dome. When it was off the dome, what made you think of like one of the things I wanted to bring back was civility and kindness. Like that was like, I really wrote that as notes because that's where we vibe. I think that's going to be something embedded in my leadership style. Well, and the, the reason why I, I think as I observe life and, and, and I have these conversations with, with colleagues, as I've had these conversations with my wife at home, it, a lot of what we comment on is, is the short fuse in the world. And there is, and I, and I don't know if COVID brought this on, or if, if it was, or people just always had this, and now because of COVID, you were locked at home, you were stuck, you, you, there was very little mobility for people to get out and do the things that you could decompress, deal with your mental stress, mental health. And people are just, and, and, and I shared yesterday with the group, um, that story in Hartford, Connecticut, where yeah. the neighbor, I mean, two neighbors, yeah. like arguing over a dog, and the neighbor shoots and kills a husband and a wife. Yeah. And they leave behind a six-month-old over a, an argument about a dog. Yeah. And so at that point, if you're arguing, turn around and walk away. And so I think for me, and as, as leaders, when people are looking up to you, being kind to people, mm -hmm. being able to open and extend a friendly smile, that is the difference that can make or change somebody's perspective that day. They could yeah. be having a bad day, and that smile or that hello gets them out of that funk just by saying hello and how are you doing today? Yeah. And so I think... Civility, kindness, and leadership is so important because you are a role model to others, mm -hmm. and it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't take mm -hmm. much just to say hello to someone, and I th and I think that's one of the things that that I shared with with our board, at least the last time that I was on the board, and I said whenever we come to these conferences that are in person, it's incumbent upon each one of the board members to make people feel welcome. Yes. To say hello, we're happy to have you here. We're glad that you're here. We'd, we would like to see you at some point take on some greater roles and be leadership and become, because I, I even said this a couple of years ago during the awards ceremony. I said, you, you always see the same people receiving awards <clears throat> because they're the individuals that will volunteer. And I said, this can be any one of you who's sitting in the audience. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's funny because I definitely never thought I'd win anything or be an award winning, but I think it was literally, I think that now, I think that this cultural too is this, there is a charge. I, I, I definitely saw Jill, but Jill was saying, Jill said yesterday, and this stuck out with me, and I actually followed up. She says, give me three people that you know that are not involved that I should reach out to. And so I sent her a list. Like, I literally followed up. And so I think that, like, you know, I, I really, really, more and more as I think about it, the more and more I study, you know, happiness and kindness, I realize that it has a real core spot in leadership. I don't know, and I thought, so, and civility, and, and so can you explain that with the word, because I know it comes from, like, s civilian, right? I guess yeah. it means, so, like, like means greater, you care about the, the civilians of the world, but what yeah. do you, what's your so, definition so, of civility? So civility, when I say civility, is being, being kind to one another, so it, it really is a play off the word of kindness, and, and I think being civil, so mm -hmm. if you have nothing good to say about somebody, just don't say it. Yeah. If you have something positive or nice to say about somebody, then say it. Yeah. Because people... 
as much as people don't like, some people don't like to be put on on a pedestal. Some people don't like to be recognized because they're either shy or it's mm -hmm. it's not built into their fabric. But people still like to hear it. You did a great job on that project. Mm -hmm. We would we would like to see more into the future. So I think being civil to one another, yeah. not being mean, yes, not right. being short fused. I think the the other thing that I would say is, and and I'll take civility, whether you call it civility or chivalry, whatever you want to call it. Don't be the jerk that you're walking down and somebody's behind you and you open the door and let the door slam in their face. Yeah. Just hold the door manners. so they can grab it. Yeah. So it, it goes civility, manners, it, yeah. just in general, in general, because I think people are stunned when you do stuff like that. That's sad. Because I, I think society's gotten to that point where nobody expects it. Like, you hold an elevator for somebody and say, here you go, you know, because we noticed the elevator doors were closing on people when they were trying to walk in. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, have a great day. What does that cost me? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Or pick up someone. Like, it's funny because uh, it does cost you nothing. And I have a random story that happened yesterday. I saw this couple taking a selfie, and I walked up to them and said, hey, would, would you like me to take a picture of you? Because, like, it's probably easier for me to take a picture of you than you take the selfie. It was an older couple. And then I walked away, and she said, young man, come back here. She's like, are you alone? I was like, right now. I just said, well, mainly, I just think I said yes. She's like, come with me. Uh, you know, we'll buy you a ticket to a comedy show. I was like, what? <laughs> like, like, so I'm walking with this couple that I just met, and I was, I was like, what am I, like, this was right before the happy hour or whatever we did, you know, and I was gonna go to this comedy show with these people I never met, just because I was about to take their selfie, then I ran into a coworker, and I was like, oh, I'm good now, I'm not alone, and I left. But I realized that was it, like, she legit, that, you just brought up that spark, like, someone that, she must, she must have been so thrown off that I walked up to him and said, do you want me to take a picture of you? And then she was willing to pay for some random comedy show here in the Borgata. And so I, I really think that, um, I, I think that's sad though, because I think what you just brought up is that normal acts, I didn't think, it was second nature, you know, and I'm not saying I'm the, um, uh, you know, the kind ambassador or whatever, but I just thought like, I don't, I'm not shy. And then I like, I usually ask people, it was almost like, I ask people, hey, me and my wife want to take a picture. Can you take a picture of us? I ask strangers that all the time. So then I was thinking like, well, if I would ask that, maybe they would like that. That's kind of that weird, right? Like, no, no. Get, you know, give to someone else that you would like, right? And I think that's how I do it too. Like, in my mindset, like, it is nice when someone opens the door for me because I know when I'm in a rush. So let me just open doors for other people. So it could be, if you're not used to it, just kind of do the other part, like, that weird, like, treat like others like you'd like to be treated. Like, think about like, wouldn't it just be nice if someone did ex smile at me, well then let me just do it for someone else and maybe I'll get it. The funny thing is maybe I'll get it back. You know, that, ener that energy or, you know, maybe someone will take a selfie of me without asking, right? So it's, I know, but the sad part is I think, I think that when I was studying this, some people have lost that. We had to like relearn it. Like it's almost like you had to explicitly say that what you just did, I explicitly say, um, you need to smile at people. And not need to, but like, and then here's the rationale. Like, you, when you smile at new people, they'll feel welcome. And people are like, oh, really? Like, it's almost like we got to retrain people. And that's kind of crazy to me. It is, absolutely. And you got you to rationale it. Like, when you open a door for someone, that helps them, you know, maybe you didn't know that they were anxious about being late. And you just gave them a little, like, you know, and, stuff and, like that. And, and, that's, and that's, like, and again, it doesn't take much to walk around and introduce people to people. Especially yeah. if they work in the same city, schools yeah. that are right near one another. Yep. Um, that makes that person feel welcome. But now that also builds their network. Yep. And then I know what those folks at those other schools are going to do. They're going to rope that individual back and say, like, hey, would you like to yep. participate in the organization? We'd like you to be involved. For and and so, it. again, it isn't, it isn't anything that costs people a ton of money yeah. to do these things, but just being kind and being positive with people. I mean, I think we already see it on the news. We see it everywhere. There's so much negativity in the world. You can yeah. read it everywhere, online, in newspapers, whatever, whatever, however you consume content. And so it, it, again, being positive, being kind, only helps this world. And it's better. not foo-foo, it's not toxic, and it's not like no. fake. It's really like opening the door, it's not a fake action, it's a mm. normal action, right? So Junior, I know you gotta do some presidential things. I would say this last one, what would be like, you know, no one listened to this whole episode, but you wanna drop a gem. What is something you really want the listeners to take away about anything? What I, what I would say is with, with anything in life, just again, be kind, be positive, and then be open to helping others. 
I love it. Shout out some plugs. Anything you want to show love to, shout out, and then anything that you're working on. Shout, shout out to the family. Hope they're doing well back at home. Shout out to uh, all my friends. Shout out to my colleagues. Um, and again, I hope everybody's doing well, stays safe, stays healthy, uh, and stays positive. There you go. Well, thank you so much for joining. I'll give you a clap. I'm using all these sound buttons. This is the first time I'm using this <laughs> board. But thank you so much. And um, we're out. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.